In Huddersgate, famed for its tram lines, up north where it's boring and slow, Stanley Bagshaw resides with his grandma at number four, Prince Albert Row. One morning, at breakfast, Stan's grandma said, Stan, have you heard about Ted? I've heard that he's had a mishap. Oh, crikey, what's happened? Stan said. Old Ted was a good friend of Stanley's. He was patient and clever and kind. So as Grandma told Stan what had happened, he could picture it all in his mind. He was down by Cope's Pond, spotting tadpoles, and had counted 304 when he noticed this hole in the mud bank, what he'd never noticed before. So he took off his shoes and his stockings and paddled across nice and slow and was just bending down to inspect it when a water rat bit his big toe. Oh! Was it bad? said our Stan, rather worried. It turned septic and old Dr Flynn sent him up to the infirmary and the doctors up there kept him in. When Grandma had finished her story, she just carried on with her meal. But Stanley sat there, very quiet. He was thinking how Edward must feel. Old Edward was feeling much better. He lay on his bed in the ward and stared at a crack in the ceiling. He didn't feel ill now, just bored. Have you noticed that crack in the ceiling? Yeah. Boring, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> the rest of the patients were bored too. Though a kind nurse did have a try at cheering them all up a little by starting a game of I Spy. <sighs> I Spy with my little eye, something beginning with T. T? Ooh, beats me. I can't think. Tomato? Old Ted just looked out of the window to the hospital gardens below. He wished he was out there with nature and the time seemed to pass very slow. I've brought you some flowers, said Stanley. I hope you're not feeling too bad. Flowers for me? beamed Edward. Hey, Stan, you're a good little lad. Ted put Stanley's flowers in a beaker and gave little Stan a boiled sweet and told him some stories about nature and said he'd been cheered up a treat. But visiting time was soon over when a nurse came in ringing a gong and announced in a voice like a foghorn, Time's up, everyone. Come along. The visitors said goodbye quickly, seemed anxious to get out the door. But Stanley gave Edward a cuddle and then gave him two or three more. Come on, if you please, said the big nurse. My nurses and I must get on. By the time Stan was out in the passage, the rest of the people had gone. Which way do I go? said our Stanley. Just follow the signs, the nurse said. Do you think you'll be able to do that? Our Stanley just nodded his head. But the signs were all rather confusing. The words seemed all foreign to Stan. He decided he'd just have a wander. And that's how the trouble began. The corridors went on forever and each one was the same as the next. Not one seemed to lead to the way out, and our Stan became rather perplexed. He came to a door marked Theatre, Surgical Ward Number Three. I didn't know nurses did acting, thought Stan. So he opened the door just to see. Inside there was lots of equipment, and a couch with all lights overhead. It didn't look much like a theatre stage. It looked more like a sunbathing bed. 
I am feeling tired, thought Stanley. I've been wandering around for so long. This must be the visitor's restroom, he thought. But that's where our Stanley thought wrong. Sir George Oswald Nash, the eye surgeon, and Dr Emmanuel Mason were in the next room getting ready for a dangerous eye operation. The doctor said, Jolly good luck, sir. Do you think it will take very long? Well, these eye operations are tricky. I'm just hoping that nothing goes wrong. The patient is here, said a staff nurse, said the surgeon. Well, that's jolly queer. He is not due to arrive till a quarter to five, said the nurse. Yes, I know, but he's here. And there, on the table, lay Stanley. So still and so pale and so small. The doctors and nurses were all rather tense. But our Stan wasn't worried at all. Our Stanley was happily dreaming, and with the hospital lights blazing down, he dreamed that he was in the desert, on a sunbathing bed, getting brown. A figure came slowly towards him, in a long flowing gown and a mask. It could be a sheik or a wandering Greek, thought Stan. When he gets here, I'll ask. The surgeon advanced to the table. In his eyes, there was deep concentration. He was feeling quite tense, about to commence a most difficult eye operation. First, he addressed his assistants. There's one thing that must be understood. When I slice into his eyelids, there will probably be lots of blood. A student nurse said, Ah! and fainted. Leave her, he said. She'll come round. I will now make the primary incision, and I want there to be not a sound. Then placing one hand on Stan's forehead, and with the skill of a surgeon supreme, he got ready to cut, and would have done but... At that point, Stan woke from his dream, and seeing the surgeon above him, in his long flowing gown and his mask, said, Excuse me, but are you an Arab? The surgeon said, No, why do you ask? His eyes were great twit, cried the staff nurse. Then the surgeon cried out, Glory be, I just placed my hand on his forehead, and now the wee chappie can see. They all danced around with excitement, shouting, Whoopee! And praise be to God! And, or to be sure, it's a miracle cure! Which seemed to our Stan rather odd. The surgeon said, How do you feel, son, now that at last you can see? I feel a bit hungry, said Stanley. I'd like to go home for me tea. Have you had a nice time? said his grandma, when our Stan got back home for his tea. I've just been to visit old Edward, said Stan. Nothing much ever happens to me.